let's discuss first of all the reason that we came up with this course and I'll first tell you what one of the reasons is not. We didn't design this uh, course as some sort of a sales pitch which is probably uh, something that someone might have in mind when they first see that a, uh, an SEO agency is doing a course on how to hire and manage an SEO agency. But it's instead because as an agency, we inherited, uh, we have inherited clients from bad SEO agencies and it happens quite regularly. As it so happens, we're actually not looking for new clients at this point. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to provide a topic that would be able to empower uh, people who are shopping for SEO services in the, in the same way that we try to answer the questions of people who come to us and might want to employ us for our services. Now, in most cases, when we deal with a business who's looking for some help in their SEO, we find that they really don't have a very good idea, first of all, how to hire an SEO or how to evaluate an SEO agency that they're currently working with. And we also see, and this is something we have to work with with our own clients, and that is often businesses don't have a, a good idea of how to work with their SEO agency for the best results. So if you're working with an agency or if you choose to work with an agency in the future, um, it's, uh, it, 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 you could end up in a situation where you're not getting the results you expect. And sometimes it is because the SEO agency is not doing their job. At other times, though, it's because the relationship is really not working well. So part of the um, goal of this is to give you more tools for working with an agency if you're already working with one or if you choose to hire one. So I'm going to make a few assumptions about uh, the audience today, those who are taking this course. And my first, uh, my first assumption is that if you signed up for this particular topic, you probably at least know what SEO is. And you may know something about SEO. You also probably have this idea or an interest that SEO is going to help your uh, website or your business overall. You also very likely are either considering having an outside SEO company or person help you with your web marketing efforts or you're in um, the process of working with an SEO company but you're not getting the results that you want. So you're wondering okay, am I with the right agency? Are they really doing their job? And you're trying to get a good answer to that question. Well, first I'd like to point your attention to a really good resource that uh, Google released earlier this year. In February, they released a video and their spokesperson, this is Miley Oye, and she does a lot of videos for Google. She's sort of like a customer service representative. I'm not going to um, show you this video here, but I do give you a link to it. It's at teachseo.co, hire hyphen and hyphen SEO hyphen video. So you can go to that. Um, you might want to wait until after the class so you're not multitasking and so you can get the most out of this particular course first. So, but that's basically a, a really good way to get Google's take on it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be referring to it a number of times. When I first watched this particular video, it's like 10 or 15 minutes long, I thought how uh, grateful I was that Google actually did the video because it's so much of what we tend to try to do when we're educating clients that we work with or we're just educating people who have come to us for SEO training. Let's start with the first part of this issue and that is how to find a good SEO. Well, before you even start the process of looking for one, it's best to try to set your expectations appropriately. First of all, keep in mind that real SEO isn't easy, and if, and if you've dug into it at all, you've probably already come to that realization. And because it's not that easy, it's also not cheap, unfortunately. Now, over the course of a year, a typical business, a small business should be willing to commit to a budget. I normally tell people at least thirty to $50,000 per year. So. Obviously, that's a significant amount of money. And I put here your mileage may vary because there are companies that will spend easily six figures a year on SEO. And often it's a very good value, particularly someone who has a national website reaching out to a national audience. And it is possible to spend less than this, but often it's by pursuing a non-traditional course. Like, for example, if you're working with an SEO for only one part of your SEO and then you're doing a lot of it in-house, you can get by with less than this particular budget. But just as a general rule of thumb, keep in mind that that's, uh, you know, a 
a pr pretty much a fair rate. And one of the ways uh, that you can determine whether you might not be uh, talking to a real SEO is if they're offering to do something for a couple hundred bucks a month, they're probably not really planning on helping you with legitimate and a legitimate SEO program. Now, the reason that I s evaluate in terms of annual expenditure is this, and it's a quote from that video, direct quote from Google. In most cases, the SEO will need four months to a year to help your business first implement improvements and then see potential benefit. So normally when I come uh, in, and I have this discussion with someone who's interested in getting professional SEO services, I don't tell them to think in terms of, oh, a month's worth of expenditures. Um, that might be easy, but it sets a false expectation. You really should be thinking in terms of an annual expenditure. Now, once you have your expectations set correctly, it's time to start soliciting recommendations. Now, as with most service providers, it's often safest to rely on recommendations of other businesses and typically look for a business that has a similar size, at least to you, even if not perhaps the exact same profile. But for example, if you're a local service provider, uh, you, you, you want to look for other local service providers that have had a successful relationship with an SEO. If you're an e-commerce company, you might want to look for someone who has had a successful a successful relationship with a, an SEO company for their e-commerce. And the reason for that is because often SEO agencies will tend to do well in particular niches because they will learn a particular business niche and they'll do better as they learn. That's the way we are. Uh, typically, we uh, get better the more we work in a particular business niche. Um, it's also a little bit like um, if you're looking for a car mechanic, uh, often the way to do it is to find somebody who has a good experience with a car mechanic because otherwise it's really tough to evaluate without actually putting your own money on the line and seeing if you have a good experience or not. So um, a place where you might get these recommendations would be business networking groups to reach out to them. Industry organizations are another good place to look. Uh, LinkedIn connections. Now typically I would recommend that you do something like this by reaching out directly to LinkedIn connections rather than just posting a status update or uh, for example going on to Facebook and saying, hey, does anybody know, et cetera. Instead, um, reach out directly to some of your LinkedIn connections and see if you can get a, a small group, a short list of SEO firms that you'd want to make a connection with. All right, so let's say you've created this short list. Well, then how do you make the choice which one to hire? And this is going to be a difficult recommendation for me to make because it involves some effort on your part and that is to speak the language. Now, as I said before, I talked about the annual budget. So SEO is an expensive investment. So think of it in terms of this way, a mistake could cost you a lot of money. If that's the case, wouldn't it pay to educate yourself about the terminology and practices before you start having discussions with the people that offer those services? Now, the shortcut, of course, is to just go out there, know nothing about SEO, nothing about what it takes to do SEO, and sort of roll the dice and get somebody to come on board. That may work for you, but like anything else, it's better if you evaluate from a position of knowledge. Now, just as a possible resource for this, for example, we just last week released a course on our academy, um, the Horizon Academy, which is a training service we offer. The course is Why Don't I Show Up on Google and What to Do About It. Now you can find that course and others at our academy, and it does go through a lot of the principles of SEO in a total course that's only about two hours. Whether it's that course or some other method that you use, I think it's well worth an investment of a couple hours, if you end up paying for it, 100 to $200 to get just the baseline training you need so that you can have a conversation with an agency from a position of knowledge. Now, 
then once you do that, you're going to be on guard for common SEO agency lies. So I'm going to give you five lies that a bad SEO company often is going to tell you. Now, first one starts with these three simple words, we can guarantee. A guarantee is, is great. We, we love to be able to get guarantees when we buy a car or a computer or anything else. We want the company to stand behind it. The only problem is asking for a guarantee from an SEO agency is sort of like asking for a guarantee from a personal trainer. If you go to a gym and you hire a personal trainer to work with you, will that trainer guarantee that you will get the results that you want? And the answer is almost invariably no. For one thing, because there's so many variables in the equation. For another thing, because a lot of it is going to depend on you implementing recommendations that they make. So an SEO company that merely wants your business is often willing to say that they can guarantee something, but that's typically a lie, just like it would be if the trainer started working with you and said, I can guarantee that you're going to you know, be able to win a marathon next year if you do my training. Another lie that's similar, we can get you to the number one spot on Google. And I say this often, this lie is, is peddled even by large companies. I've seen this lie peddled by Dex, for example, and sometimes they will have shortcuts or ways where they can basically buy a listing, buy you onto a listing in the number one spot on Google for terms that don't matter to your business. So in a way, I guess you could say they can tell a partial truth in the sense that I also could get you onto the number one spot on Google if I was trying to rank you for, let's say, spotted purple monkeys. I guarantee that I can get you the number one spot for pot spotted purple monkeys because nobody else is looking for that search results. But otherwise, if it's for one of your commercially important terms, this is typically going to be a lie. The other is quick results. You're going to be listed within a week. Um, or it could be a month, or it could be 10 days, whatever it is, that's typically not a legitimate statement, so you should be wary of it. This is a big one because it's still used, and that is we will submit your site to search engines, and the truth be known, really nobody who, who's legitimate is going to be submitting your site to search engines because search engines already know about your website. They don't have a problem finding websites like they did 10 or 15 years ago. So this is another bogus claim. And then finally, we have a secret method. And so typically if a company gives you this idea that they have a secret method, it's, it's merely because they want you to trust them almost like a witch doctor. So also beware of that as a common agency lie. Now, According to Google, let's, that's, those are bad SEO lies. Let's talk about a good SEO firm. So a good SEO firm won't just focus on rankings, but how they can help your business. And so if an SEO that you're talking to is not interested in learning about your business, look elsewhere. And that's specifically what Miley Oye says. Look elsewhere if they're not interested in learning about your business. And the reason for that is, that it's difficult to do good SEO without knowing about a business's goals and customers. Plus, and here's a quote, again from the video that I showed you, a good SEO should feel like someone you can learn from. They'll want to educate you on how search engines work so that SEO becomes part of your general business operations. I thought this was a very, very crucial observation by Miley Oye in this video. And it's one that I have not heard before in similar um, sets of advice. I thought it was very insightful in the sense that an SEO is in the business of educating clients. And that's one of the reasons we actually went to the degree of starting a training offshoot of our business called the Horizon Web Marketing Academy for the purpose of trying to educate clients. We find that if a client is interested in educating themselves about SEO, they're going to be a better client and the relationship has a greater chance of succeeding. So 
if you're talking to an SEO that seems disinterested in bringing you up to speed on the principles that they are using, then that's also a sign that they're probably not going to give you the full service that you need in order to succeed. So keeping these principles in mind, and again, we're in the section here where we're talking about making the decision to hire the right SEO. Now you're going to be conducting your interview with the prospective SEO. So I typically recommend that you don't hire based on just email correspondence. Now that means you need to avoid offshore providers because typically offshore providers are in India or Eastern Europe. And usually that means that they're pretty hard to get on the phone. This does not mean every offshore provider is trying to pull the wool over your eyes or, or does poor services, but it's really hard to make that determination if you can't get them on the phone. So whether it's on the phone or they come into your office, as you conduct the interview, the main thing here is to let the SEO do the talking. Don't carry the discussion for the person that you're talking to who's trying to sell you SEO services. Don't immediately tell them everything about your business. Instead, sit back and let them start talking to you. Now be on the watch for certain negative indicators that would tend to, I would say, raise some red flags during this interview process. The first is, the, a red flag would be a company that doesn't ask a lot of questions. If they are so interested in telling you about what they can do for you, and how great their service is, how great they've done for other people, and they're not asking you a lot of questions about your business, that to me would be a, a real cautionary note. A company also that can't point to specific successful results would be one that you'd wanna watch out for, would tend to be a negative indicator. Or a company that can't point to long-term clients. There are, actually companies out there that engage in SEO at a very cynical level. In other words, they know they're going to start working with a client. They know the client is going to pay them a certain amount of money up front and a certain amount of money uh, over a period of a few months. They know they're not going to get any results and they know that client is go only going to be around for a few months. And they just churn through new clients constantly because typically there are a lot of people out there for a good selling organization that they can turn and burn, so to speak. So if you're talking to an SEO company and they don't have long-term relationships with clients, it might be an indicator that that's the type of company that you're talking to, or at the very least, that's a company that does other things to shed clients too rapidly. SEO is a long-term process. You want to look for a company that can develop and nurture a long-term relationship with you. Also, if the company gets on the call, has not asked you a bunch of questions, but immediately claims to know what's wrong with your website, and they haven't done something we call an SEO audit on your website, big, big negative indicator there. And the reason for that we'll get into in just a moment. But basically, it, it would be like somebody, if you drive into a car mechanic and you drive up and the car mechanic comes out and says, hey, I know what's wrong with your car. Um, it'll cost you $500. You'll need to leave it here overnight. And they haven't even talked to you about your car. That would be a ridiculous situation. And it's similarly ridiculous with a company that thinks they know everything that's wrong with your website and hasn't really investigated. Now finally, watch out for a company that uses a lot of technical jargon. And sometimes this can be accidental. I do it too. I'll lapse into technical terms and without even realizing it. But sometimes also if a company, if a representative for a company does this repeatedly, whether it's for, let's say, IT services or whether they're trying to sell you computers or whether they're trying to sell you SEO services, anything else, if they're using a lot of technical jargon, they're probably just trying to show you that this is over your head, you can't really understand it, and you just need to hire them in order to get the job done. So those are some very specific things that you can watch out for. Now the last one I'm gonna give you is also very critical, and that is if they're not interested in your competitors. 
in the business of SEO, a lot of whether you succeed or not depends on how tough your competition is. So if an SEO comes into your situation and isn't really interested in how in your who your competitors are and what your competitive marketplace is like, then they're not really giving you a legitimate evaluation as to what they can do for you. A good SEO will typically in one way or the other, they're going to address what I call the three SEO pillars of success. And if you've taken some of my other training, you're going to know that the, this is going to sound familiar to you. Now, the first is technical issues. So making sure that your website is search engine friendly. It's easy for the search engines to interact with. So that's one of the key things. The second one is relevancy. Making sure that the content of your website is relevant to those searches that are going to bring you business, not just any searches, but searches that will bring you business. And then the third is authority, and that is making sure that there's a strategy in place for increasing the number of websites that link to yours. When it comes to this third thing of authority, you also need to talk to them about what they do to guard against practices that might trigger a penalty with Google. So those are the three pillars of website success. Now, the course that I recommended at the beginning, um, which is uh, why don't I show up on Google and what to do about it, I give you some more complete understanding of those three areas. And this is where having understanding is going to help you evaluate a potential SEO service provider. So a potential SEO service provider should be able, again, they don't necessarily have to use these terms, but they should be able to sh tell you what sort of a strategy they would have for dealing with each of these three areas of SEO. Now, let's talk a bit about SEO audits. In most cases, a competent SEO firm that is really interested in helping you long term is going to suggest an SEO audit at the outset of the relationship. Because without doing an audit, they can't really know what recommendations to make. They also can't give you a good estimate in, as to what it's going to cost you. So to conduct an audit, a company is always going to need to ask you for access to things like Google Analytics or Google Search Console. What you do need to be on guard for is somebody who will come to you and say, hey, we've done an audit on your website and here's the report. And they send you a PDF and it'll have all sorts of things, some things that are right, some things that are wrong. We also can pull a quick audit on a client uh, such as that to just get a real quick overview. It's sort of like, again, I'm going to go back to the auto mechanic uh, analogy. If an auto mechanic walks around your car, they might be able to see things like your tire pressure is low. They may be able to hear that the engine is running roughly. So they'll be able to get a, a, a really shallow idea about what's going on with your car. But until they actually open up the hood, and get into the engine, they're really not going to be able to give you a good evaluation. Well, the equivalent in our business of opening up the hood is asking for access to things like Google Analytics, and Google Search Console, often access to your website. And for this reason, it's again good to have created your short list from companies that you know have a legitimate relationship with other companies because this is um, giving a certain amount of privacy away when it comes to your company. So you want to make sure that you do that to somebody where you have some indication that they're a legitimate company. Google talks in that video about SEO audits. And here's what they say. They say that when you're starting to work with an SEO, you should ask them to do a search audit. And this is the one part I disagree with in Google's advice. I think the SEO should suggest a search audit. But in any case, minor quibble there. And as Google says very specifically, you should expect to pay for it. Um, an audit is more than just kicking the tires. It actually involves some expert time and attention, but it's well worth it. Now, if you're a larger business, Google actually recommends that you hire different SEO firms, each one to perform a search audit, and then hire based on the audits that you have paid for. So that's a more expensive process, but it actually is a very good way to see who comes up with the recommendations that really make sense to you. A good technical SEO audit should show what the issue is, 
what the suggestions of the firm is for improving it, what sort of investment is going to be required to fix it, what the positive impact is likely to be, and then finally a plan for continuous improvement and responses. A technical audit should cover things like internal linking, in other words, the navigation within your site, how you link from one page to another, crawlability, and this is Google's term for what I mentioned as search engine friendliness, URL parameters. Now, this is a fairly technical area, so I'm not going to really go in depth, but Google mentions them, URL parameters, server connectivity, response codes, there's a lot more that goes into it. I'm just hitting some of the points that Google uh, hits in that video. So now that we've gone through these points of, of finding and interviewing and getting ready to hire an SEO, just for fun, I'm going to show you an actual email that I received once, and I'll show you how you can evaluate an email like this. Here's a, this is exactly from the email. And I'm sure you've seen something like this. I did a report some time back on your website, and it showed your site is dormant. It needs to have the meta tags redone, so that's technical jargon, and submitted to as many search engines as possible. So there we've got the lie of you need to be submitted to search engines. The more search engines your site is submitted to, the more back-end links that are going to be created which of course is completely bogus. If you've investigated all this notion of linking and authority, you'll know that search engines don't create backlinks to your site, other websites do. The submissions to the search engines also tells the spiders to come to your page and read the meta tags. So here we have more jargon. It drives your rankings up. So this is a, a in essence, a promise. I'm submitting to 1.2 million search engines two to three times a month. I don't even know what to deal with that kind of a, a bogus claim. If your website goes more than 30 days without submission, the rankings fall out of sight. Your website company probably promised good rankings, but it hasn't happened. Without my service, you'll miss out on 80% of the buyers and sellers searching online. So. Now you should, I mean, probably this email is so over the top, you probably could have put it in your trash file from before. But you can see some of the things that I was talking about, some of these warnings, the, the claim to know your site without having investigated your site, the, the promises to achieve impossible results, the implication of some sort of secret sauce, all of this is embedded in this very unethical, uh, email outreach. Let's say now that you finally made the decision, you've hired an SEO company, well now it's in everybody's best interest that the relationship succeed. So my recommendation is that your first discussion with your new SEO provider would be about KPIs. Now KPI stands for Key Performance Indicator. These are typically company specific indicators. Now often KPIs will be shared between companies, but usually they're determined based on your business model and what you are hoping to accomplish in your industry. It's fine if you want to measure things like traffic and you know, how many people visit your website and rankings, you know, what do I come up number 1 for, you know, blue blue widgets. But usually those are not the measurement of success. So what is the measurement of success? Here it's going to be on you. You need to come up with what success is going to look like to you, what you want to accomplish through this relationship with this SEO company. The second part of this is you have to find a way to measure it. So let's say for you success is number of leads that you receive submitted from your website per month. And you already know that if you get 10 leads, you'll make one sale. So if let's say you want 100 new leads every month off of your website, that's something you can discuss with your SEO and you can start measuring it. Now, once you find a way to measure it, now it's time to make sure that your SEO is doing their part besides the actual optimization. Part of what they need to do is also report 
regularly on progress against those key performance indicators. And what, what I find is very common in, an industry, in relationships between companies and SEOs, that someone will hire an SEO, three, four, five months later, they've hardly heard anything back from them. And they often will ask me, um, how do I know that they're even doing anything? It's theoretically possible for an SEO to be working hard for you and not be telling you anything about it. But if that's the case, then they're not really a good SEO because an SEO is going to communicate with you about the progress that you're making so that you don't have to be wondering, am I spending my money appropriately or not? And you shouldn't have to beg them for the report. An SEO should be eager to make, bring you into the process and make sure that communication flows regularly. Part of your managing an SEO to success is going to be what you do to make the relationship succeed. Now, one of those first things is to demonstrate patience. Now, demonstrate patience as long as the SEO is communicating well, answering your questions, and reporting those agreed upon KPIs. If they're doing that, you do need to be able to give them time to work. As Google says in the video, they say four to 12 months is a reasonable time frame. And I think I even got that somewhere um, in my slides. But, but four to 12 months means that you do have to be patient, but you don't have to be patient if they're not communicating with you, that would be unacceptable. Now, you also need to have clear communication with your SEO about what your role is going to be, and then be willing to commit to support that company with the things that only you can provide. Well, what are those things that only you can provide? The first thing is information on your customers and your competitors. This is extremely valuable information to anyone who's doing SEO for your company, to know where you've been getting for your customers, what they look like, how they've found you in the past, maybe why you've lost customers, and your competitors, how your competitors have been doing, how they've been succeeding online. Do you know of situations where competitors of yours have failed online? in initiatives, like for example, do you know that competitors have been running Google advertising and you can see that it's not working for them? Any pieces of information you can provide are going to increase the possibility that a competent SEO will put together the right program and implement it correctly. You also are going to be the primary source for content. That might be textual content, it could be visual assets like photos or uh, perhaps uh, visual guides, PDFs, anything that's specific to your service or product. And finally, you're going to be able to, you're going to be the, the uh, ones who are responsible to make sure that necessary changes are made to your website. This is a little easier if you hire an SEO that is also a web developer. And typically some SEO companies, we're, we're in this category of an SEO company, we don't normally like to do SEO for a client unless we also are doing, at least have the ability to make modifications on their website. But if the SEO company does not have that ability, then you need to be able to make sure whatever changes they recommend happen. And finally, you need to be able to give them full access. I mentioned this before when it came to the SEO audit. But on an ongoing basis, an SEO is going to need access to your analytics, your search console, your website, and any other services that might be relevant. So let's talk about uh, how Google sees it. And this is actually the slide I mentioned um, on the last slide. And that is, these are points that you'll see if you go back and view that video. This is a direct quote, an SEO's potential is only as high as the quality of your business or website. So the quality of your business, your website, that's your responsibility in the partnership. An SEO can help you with advice, but ultimately you're the one who controls your business practices, your marketing statements, uh, how you handle customer complaints, and also how you develop your website, whether you put a budget into making your website better. 
Google also says that a successful SEO looks to improve the entire searcher experience from the search results to clicking on your website and potentially converting. So the implication of those two statements is there's stuff that you're going to have to do as you're part of this relationship and you need to be prepared to do that. So the main thing, as you can see, the implication here is you have a partnership with any SEO that you hire. You'd better be able to communicate well with that SEO. You need to be able to respect their knowledge based on communication and results they've had, either with your company or with other companies. They need to be able to express to you what this looks like from their perspective. In other words, if an SEO is looking to improve for example, the ability of a customer to make a purchase on your website, they need to tell you more than just, oh, you need to make your website better. They need to be able to tell you, here's how we think your website needs to be made better. And not only that, we can help you measure the results and see if these improvements are actually working. Well, that pretty much covers the main points that I want to talk about in this particular course. Obviously, we could go into you know, 45 minutes on each one of these slides, really, but I'm hopeful that this has given you a good understanding of some of those principles that I think are important based on years and years of working with clients in the SEO business and also as a web developer principles that will help you be able to find the right SEO and manage the relationship towards success. We've come to the point where we can handle some questions and answers. And um, if you do have to leave, uh, go ahead and check back the recording. The, we're going to send you a link to the recording by email. I don't have it, a download link li like I usually do, so we'll be sending you an email uh, with that link. So with that having been said, Matt, I heard you come back on the call or at least unmute your microphone. So uh, maybe you could let me know whether we've got some questions that uh, we can answer for the audience. Hi, Ross. Thanks for the great information. We do have some questions. And if anybody out there has any more, please feel free to uh, note those right into the questions box. So Michelle wants to know if there's any benefits or downfall to having an one SEO company doing everything on their site from SEO and pay-per-click. Um, so if there are downfalls to having um, a variety of companies as opposed to having a single stop provider. Right, exactly. Because I was yeah. thinking, you know, one of your other slide was, you know, we offer all of these things. Is that a, is that a benefit or, or a well, I'd say that in certain cases, having a service, pro in most cases, I would say it's best to have an SEO service provider that is able to cover the full range of SEO services, at least when it comes to what we call organic SEO. In other words, how you appear in the search results. Now, uh, the reason for that is because you need to have a comprehensive strategy, and if one company doesn't really know how to implement the various parts of the strategy, then you're in danger of having maybe some disconnect between different providers and not having a cohesive, a, co, uh, a cohesive approach to it. Um, so for that reason, I think it's best to do that. Now that having been said, sometimes it's, it, it is necessary, for example, to have one company doing the organic SEO and perhaps a separate company that's doing the paid search because often companies will tend to specialize in those two broad areas. But, um, and so it, it's really not a real simple yes or no question, but in most cases, try not to fragment the work up between a bunch of different companies. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say too, that uh, if, if they are in two separate companies, make sure that they're communicating with one another because, uh, the uh, the pay per click people are going to want you're creating new landing pages and watching uh, uh, conversions and you got to make sure that they're they're willing to work work together. Right, and what I found, like for example, we have a client you'll know who I'm talking about, although I don't want to say who it is, that is part of a a very large uh, corporate brand, 
and uh, they have actually, um, uh, we have to share the account, two different SEO companies, and we've had situations, for example, where we've made changes to pages, and then the other company will come in and overwrite the changes that we've made. So that's the type of situation where you can end up with companies working sort of at cross purposes. Yep, very good. So Frank wants to know, do you have recommendations about account access before signing a contract? Well, my recommendation is that, you, that for a company to actually be able to give you a legitimate quote, you're going to have to give them at some level of access. So my recommendation would be that you first check out their references before that you give them access. In other words, find out, uh, you know, ideally if you haven't got if you haven't had them recommended to you by someone you trust, ask them for some recommendations of clients they've worked with or websites they've worked on. They should be willing to reveal that much to you if they're asking you to reveal the inner workings of your website. Now, once you've done that, for both uh, Google Search Console and for Google Analytics, which are, are the two primary things that, for example, we would need access to, you can set up, uh, basically add an email address for the, the pros prospect that you're talking to in a uh, view-only mode. And um, so they don't have any rights to make changes on your account. And it is true, they will be able to see some stuff there that you, know, you wouldn't want to just normally publicly share, but your, your relationship of trust has to start at least at that point um, or you're not going to be able to give them a good indication of what they're dealing with. And that's why I'm saying it's often best not to um, entertain as prospects companies that you don't have at least some level of confidence in at the very beginning because it's hard to have that kind of conversation otherwise. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Great. Good answer. So I have another question from Bob. And uh, I can see all business owners asking this question. So in, in your presentation, you mentioned that you cannot, uh, uh, don't expect results for four to 12 months. And Bob wants, or I'm, yeah, Bob wants to know, what can I do now to increase my ROI? <laughs> ah, well, that is a good question. And there are two areas where you can have a pretty quick result on your ROI in most cases. The first is you can um, start a program of Google advertising at the same time as you start a program of SEO. Now, it does require that you devote some budget to it, but with Google pay, we call this paid search, and that's the, the ads that you get whenever you do a, a search on Google. So Google AdWords, that's their platform, or Bing, uh, it's Microsoft Ad Center for Bing. Uh, for either of those search engines, you can buy your way in front of other people to start getting immediate results while you're waiting for your SEO program to kick in. And then um, it's possible, uh, depending on, I mean, it could be that you'll always make money off of ads, but it is possible if you start getting good results in natural or organic search that then you can dial back or even eliminate that advertising. So that's kind of a bridging strategy to, to use that as a fill-in. The other thing that we haven't really talked about during this webinar too much, or we, we touched on it just a little bit, and that is optimizing your existing website for conversions. Now, if your site has no traffic, this strategy won't work. But if, you're, if your website is already getting traffic, you're hiring an SEO to get more traffic. But the SEO should be able to make recommendations to you about how you can make your website do more with the traffic it already has. So if you're getting, you know, let's say a thousand visits a month from people, and the majority of those people are confused and unable to take action on your website, the immediate gain you can get is from having a, a, an SEO who knows what we call conversion rate optimization start making immediate recommendations for how you would want to improve your website to capture better results from the audience they already have. And those would be the two uh, areas that I would see as being the most obvious where you could start getting some immediate ROI. 